Hi, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up your remote view on your Dawa NVR. I have two NVRs here and they both work in the same manner. For example, I have the 4216, the larger NVR, and then I've got the smaller NVR 4116. Both of these are running NVR 4.0 software and I'm not going to demonstrate how to set up the remote view. Now the remote view means you can connect your cell phone to your NVR and view the footage from a different geographical location. These two NVRs have the same software. This is the NVR 4.0 software. So you follow the same process whether it is the smaller NVR or the 4216. Now in order for the remote view to work your NVR needs to have an IP address. Over here I have a router which would normally have internet connectivity which means I must plug in a cable, an ethernet cable from my NVR to the router. So by connecting the NVR to the router, I now give my NVR access to the internet. The remote view function allowing you to have access to the NVR via a different geographical location means that you need to have internet connectivity on the router. So this router would be connected either via 5G, DSL, fiber, whatever type of router you've got, as long as it's connected to the internet, your NVR will now be able to have internet connectivity. You do not necessarily have to connect directly to the router. In a lot of applications, you might find you have a switch. You'll be connecting from your NVR to a switch. That switch would then be connected to a router that has internet connectivity. So in this case, I've gone from the NVR to the switch, but the same switch is connected to the internet enabled router. This NVR will then still have internet access because it is still connected to this router. If you would like to connect a second NVR to the internet, it's not a problem. You just plug in the cable there and you can either plug directly into the router or you can just plug into the switch which is connected to that same router. Now the purpose of the remote view is it allows you to view footage while you are in a different geographic location. That means that you could be in a different country, a different city, and you will still be able to view the footage that is stored or live view footage that is available on these NVRs. So that means that your cell phone also needs to have internet connectivity. This could be connecting via a Wi-Fi on the network which you are connected to, or it will be via your cellular service provider. Now you can set up the remote view using a laptop or computer using the web browser method. So that means that your laptop would also need to be connected to the switch which is connected to your NVR. If you are going to be using the web browser method then you will need the IP address of the NVR. I will still show you how to get that IP address. Once your NVR is connected to a router you would also have a Wi-Fi network available. That means that your laptop could also connect to your NVR via Wi-Fi through your router to your NVR. That also means that if you are on the local network you can connect to your NVR via Wi-Fi from your phone to the router to your NVR. Now in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to set up the peer-to-peer -peer remote view setup. That means I'm going to be scanning a QR code or using the serial number in order to link the NVR to the software on my phone. If you would like to see how to do the remote view using port forwarding on a router then please check out my videos in my Dawa playlist. In this video I'm just showing the quick method where you'll scan the QR code provided by the NVR or by using the serial number and then it links to the NVR automatically for you. Remember that in order for the remote view to work your NVRs have to have network connectivity and that network has to have access to the internet. Now in order to connect these NVRs to your network you would also need to set up the IP address. Now to configure the NVR I'm just going to plug in my cable to the back of the NVR and use the mouse which is connected to the USB port so that I can connect a monitor and view the settings of the NVR software. Now keeping in mind that the default IP address of the Dawa NVRs is 192.168.1.108. That is the address of the NVR when it comes out of the factory. In most people's case they will not use that address because most people have a different IP range in their local network. That means that you may need to change the IP address of your NVR. I will show that to you shortly. In my case my router's IP address is 192.168.8.1. 
So the IP address of this router is in a different range to the IP address that is the default IP address of these NVRs. That means that if I connect my NVR to my network, I won't have internet connectivity unless I first change the IP address of whichever NVR I'm going to be using. Remember that in order for devices to see each other on the same network, they have to be within the same IP range. I'll now demonstrate this on the software. Now over here I have the NVR and I'm going to quickly log in. Now once you've logged in, you select the network option over here. Now at this point you've got an option. Are you going to use the default IP address that the NVR uses? Dawa uses 192.168.1.108 or are you going to choose a unique address that is specific to your network range? Now in this case, I do not want this to be my IP address. So I'm going to manually change this IP address. But in your case, if you're happy with that IP address, then just leave it. Now I want to manually change my IP address because my network will not see this address. I need to manually change it, so I'm going to say edit. Now you've got two options here. You can have DHCP on, which means that you will allow the IP address to be provided by the router that is already on your network, or maybe there's a DHCP server on your network. In most cases, it will be your router, which will then provide the NVR with an IP address. I don't like to do that. I like to give the NVR an IP address. And in my case, my network is in the eight range. So I'm now going to change this. So I've changed mine to 192.168.8.253. Why did I choose that address? Because my router's address is 192.168.8.1. So as long as I'm in the same subnet, it will be fine. I can even test it and it even says IP is available. If there was a Radiant NVR with this address on the network, there would be a clash. You have to come up with an IP address that is available. Now, for example, I know there's another camera server on my network with this address, 251. So if I test it, it says IP conflicted, meaning there's already a device using this address. So you must choose an address which is available. In my case, I know address 253 is available. Now the subnet mask, you can leave it as 255, 255, 255, and the default gateway, this is very important. Now my router's IP address is 192.168.8.1. So you must get the IP address of your router in order for your NVR to have access to the internet. So at this point, what I do is I reboot the NVR. Right, the NVR has booted. Now I'm going to log in and see that everything is working. Right, so I'm just going to log in. I'm now going to check my network settings. Right, so now I can confirm that the IP address is correct. And here I'm doing a quick test. And now I can go ahead and add my cameras and set up the remote view. All right, I have three IP cameras over here and I'm just going to plug them directly into the back of the NVR. Right, so I've now plugged in three IP cameras. Now, if you quickly want to see the live view, I click here and there I can see the live feed of my three cameras plus the one which is already mounted on site. Right, now the next step is to set up the remote view. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click network. Now towards the bottom here, it says P2P. Now I've blurred it for the reason that if anyone can see your QR code or your serial number, if they know your password, they can also log into your NVR and take over it. So that is why I've blurred this. So keep these things private. And on the left hand side over here, we've got the cell phone client. And on the right hand side, we've got the device QR code and serial number. In this case, we are going to need the device serial number and QR code and make sure that your peer to peer is enabled. Now what we do is we go to the app. Now in this case, I'm going to continue using the Android platform. You can do the same using the Apple platform. And I'm now going to search for Dawa app. You can see there Dawa CCTV app or anything to do with Dawa should bring up the apps. Now you'll see there's quite a few. Make sure you download the one that is from Dawa Technology Company Limited. Now over here, I've already installed this one. This is the GDMSS Lite will also work. Or you could use the GDMSS Plus. Both of these will work. Now there's the app and I'm now going to go to the add device option. So what I do is I tap home. And then over here, it says device. Now I already have some clients listed here, so I'm going to add a new one. I tap the plus, and then there's the option. It's asking me serial number or scan. 
IP or domain or online search. Now, in this video, I'm going to show the serial number or scan. If you want to do this using port forwarding, please check out my other video showing step-by-step -step how to set up the remote view using the port forwarding option. The video is found in the Dawa playlist. Right, so in this case, I'm going to say serial number or scan. Now notice how the phone is trying to scan. So now what I need to do is point the phone to the screen to capture the device serial number or you can manually type in the serial number. In this case, I'm going to use the scan option. Now it has find the serial number and I just say next. Now it's asking you what type of device is this? Now in this case, it's an NVR. So I just tap NVR. Now it will display the serial number and all I need to do is put in the password. Now if you had changed your username, it wouldn't say admin. For this video, I left the username as admin. I just need to put in my password. I've put in my password and then I've just given it a device name. I've just called that NVR 253 and now I press the save option here. Make sure your phone is on the same network and there you can see my live view immediately working. So for example, when I put my hands in front of the camera, you can see how the live view is working. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off the Wi-Fi and make sure it is still working. So I'm exiting my network and I'm now going to stream via cellular connection. Right, I'm going to now log back into the app because I had logged out. And I just need to select the device. Now in my case, I have a few, so I'm just selecting 253. And then I'm just going to select all the cameras and I'm going to say start live view. Now, it will take a bit more time because I'm not on the same network now. I'm going via cellular connection. You can see there come the live views. Now, just showing you the delay, there's quite a lot of lag. This is now connected via a cellular network. I'm not on my same network. And notice when I put my hand in front of the cameras, look how long it takes before the app shows my hand. So we can see there's a significant delay. And if I put it back to Wi-Fi, you can see how much quicker it is. You'll notice a much higher lag when you're no longer on the same network. Right, so the remote view is working whether I'm on the same network or on a remote network. If your remote view is not functioning properly, you can also change your DNS set. If you click the network option, over here it says IP version and then it says preferred DNS. This is the standard Google DNS service provided. But if you want to put your router's IP address here, you can also do that. And on some networks, this is useful. Right, thanks for watching and cheers.